Hello folks, welcome back to the channel. Today I'm doing something a little different because it's 9,000 billion degrees outside and uh, despite the fact that I should be continuing to fix up that Sony TCK75, I just can't bring myself to do it. It is roasting hot all over the house today and there's no central air conditioning of any kind. So uh, yeah, I'm kind of in uh, conserve energy mode here. So, this is going to be a bit of a show and tell video. We're going to talk about my plans for the uh, 2025 upgrade of my home theater. At least, I'm hoping there's going to be an upgrade. I don't know for sure yet. But uh, I decided to go ahead and get one of these upgrades out of the way early. So I bought this amplifier. It's an 8-channel, 2,000-watt amplifier. So, uh, yeah, plenty of power in this little guy. And yeah, Lab Groupon is one of the few amp manufacturers I would ever choose to uh, replace QSC with, which is the current subwoofer amplifier I'm using in the home theater right now. It's an RMX 1850HD if you're interested. Anyhow, this guy comes from California. I decided to buy on Reverb for the first time ever because that was the only place I could find one of these for sale for any kind of a reasonable cost. These things are like 6000 bucks new or something like that. And uh, I paid about, oh, what was it, 1100 bucks I think, Canadian. And then there was shipping on top of that. And then there was customs and UPS charges on top of that. And by the way, I cannot tell you how much I hate UPS right now. They are the worst. This has been the worst courier experience ever of any company. But uh, yeah. At least I got it in my hands now. It's here. Now we can do something with it. So the plan today is to just check this out and see if it works so I can get back to the seller and uh, tell them the amp came in one piece. Because uh, if this goes well, I'm planning to buy more than one from him. First, I want to check over the condition here. It seems like it survived in good shape. He had it very well packed. So uh, I'm going to take this cover off here so we can get at the uh, controls. All right, we've got the uh, circuit boards stuck where they're supposed to be. One of these I was looking at, <coughs> excuse me, had this board all up here somewhere. I don't know what was going on with it. And they still wanted a fortune for the amp, so uh, yeah, I can only hope I bought from a decent seller. But I, I'm sure I did. I'm going to run these all the way down now. Controls feel good. Now this did not arrive without incident. There was some damage. This thing was rattling around in the box. and You'll see what it's from momentarily, but this is the only damage I've found so far. Maybe we'll find more on camera. Maybe we won't. I don't know, we'll see. Let's go around to the back, shall we? And yep, there's what the uh, piece I showed you is from. It's from uh, this Phoenix connector back down here. And I don't care about these. I just want the Phoenix connectors themselves. Because uh, I need these to hook up the amplifier. At least for testing, but uh, you can also get these through a DigiKey these days, so... If your amp doesn't have them, you just measure the uh, the pin spacing and you just go buy the ones you need. So yeah, I'm going to unplug these now because I need at least one anyway. So we can test this. And towards the end of the video, we'll go up to the, uh, to the screen area of the home theater and I'll talk more about my plans there and... Uh, tell you more about why I need such a big amplifier, or such a pair of big amplifiers, I should say. Okay, I don't see any major damage here. We've got an ear bent in, but that is normal for these big amps. They weigh a lot, even when they're Class D like this guy is. I don't see any problems on the inside, at least uh, without taking the cover off. We might have the cover off in due time but uh yeah it looks like it got here in one piece so uh, let's apply power 
and we'll see if we can get some power going here. I want to check to see how loud the fans are as well. Okay, here goes nothing. Okay, it's set for remote. Okay, what is this? Okay, we've got a fault on channel F. Dang it. This thing was sold to me in working order. With that said, I don't actually need channel F. I just need seven of the eight channels on this guy. Reason being, four of the channels are going to be bridged to drive my subwoofers, I hope. And uh, the other three are going to be running my front stage. Left, center, and right. But uh, I'm not happy about this showing up with a fault. But at least we got fan action going on here. So yeah, let me shut you off real quick. I'm gonna take a picture to send to the uh, seller and we'll see what happens. All right, I got my picture. Now uh, we'll have to see what happens from here. I don't wanna send this back, especially with the way UPS just treated me. So uh, yeah, I'm not sure I'm gonna be able to fix channel F but uh, I don't know. If I can get the other channels to, to work and make noise, then that's all I need, I guess. <sighs> this has been one frustrating experience. Anyhow, let me shut you off and I'll get something to put a signal through this and uh, a test speaker and uh, we'll see what we can get out of her. Okay, I think we're ready to do some testing now. At least I hope we are. I'm going to use the Nakamichi BX150 because variable output level and hopefully we can get some sound out of this so let's have a go i've got it hooked up to a, the a channel right now so once again we've got the faults on channel f i may pull the cover off just to have a look at that see if i can do anything for it there's a speaker off to the uh, left over here so start this playing and we'll see if we can get audio. I've got all the all the levels down right now. I just want to be sure I don't blow out our ear, eardrums. Okay, A channel works and passes signal. Okay, so I'm gonna go around back and I'm gonna switch to B channel next. But first I'm gonna dial up my levels here. Okay, let's see what we can get, can get out of the other channels. Channel B, coming up. B channel works. How about C channel? C is good, how about D? Okay, D channel works. Took me a second there to verify that one. E channel. Where is that one? E channel works. F channel is not going to work, so we're going to skip that and go to G channel. G works. And now we are on F channel. 
or H channel. If I can hold my alligator clips in place. All right. So all the channels I need to work do work. That is good. That is very good. But I'm still mad about paying full price for a amp that does not fully work. So I'm gonna have to get back with the seller and see if he can make things right in that situation. Meantime, I'm gonna get the neck off the top of this thing and we're gonna see if we can find out anything about the amplifier on the inside. Okay, if you ever wanted to see the inside of one of these big lab group and amplifiers, now's your chance. We've got two fans here, 80 millimeters. We've got a bunch of enormous capacitors in the front section here for the switching power supply. And I'm hoping the stuff I'm gonna to need to test is up top here. I don't know which channel is which. Doesn't really say unless I'm missing it. Okay, so if, if we assume that this channel, or this side over here starts with the A channel and goes all the way up to F over here, or whatever, I think we can probably assume that the fault is gonna be over here somewhere. So, let me get my meter out and we'll see if we can find it. Okay, where can I set this so you can see it? We are going to go looking for shorts on these output transistors over here, assuming that's what they are. I think that's what they are. I don't see what else they would be. Oh, before we do that, let's check these fuses. Okay, we've got one, two, three, four, five, and six. We've got a pair of fuses for each. That fuse is good. And that fuse is good. We'll go over to diode mode and we'll check this transistor over here. I'm looking for shorts. And that one certainly looks like a short. Maybe not. Might be a MOSFET, actually. Now that one looks a bit suspicious right there. It's measuring the same in both directions. Found our problem already. I think. Let me find a marker here so I can just mark that one. Let's see, which one was I testing again? You look down for five seconds. Yeah, one of those devices is good and one is bad. So I'm gonna mark that one. And I'm gonna continue down just in case that's not the only one. And this being class D, I really don't know much at all about uh, repairing these things. It could be that just replacing that is all I need to do, but uh, I just don't know my way around class D amplifiers that, uh, that well. We've got a couple of, I don't know, are these pre-drivers or what are they? There's something. Anyhow, let's see. We have an NPN and a PNP side to this. So this one should be okay. And this is the next one we need to check, I think. I don't know how to get that thing out of there. 
so I can check it. So yeah, clearly we have a blown out output, output device on that channel, so uh, I'm going to set my meter aside for now. And what I want to do is I want to fire this up again and make sure both fans work. Because they both need to work if I'm using this. Okay, where's my power cable? And yeah, I can do further diagnostics off or diagnostics off camera as well. I don't have to waste your time for the next 30 minutes or whatever. Okay, powering on. Yes, both channel or both fans work. So we're good to go there. E channel would be this pair right here. You can feel that nice breeze coming off those fans. So yeah, got a little fruit fly hanging around me right now. Don't know if I got them or not. Anyhow, what I'm going to do now, I think, is pull the fuse for the bad one, if I can. Sorry guys, think it ain't easy when you're, when you're me and it's incredibly hot down here so I'm gonna pull this fuse right here I don't want this thing trying to use that channel if it's failed okay so we've still got the uh, fault but uh, at least the fuse is out now Wondering if I gotta pull the other fuse here. Woo! Okay, public service announcement. You gotta watch these things when you're working on them. If you complete a circuit like I just did, you'll get a zap from these things. So, uh, yeah, watch out. Don't be like Donnie Don't Does, or however that goes. It's three million degrees outside, okay? All right, there we go. Yeah, both of those fuses are for that channel, I'm gonna say. So, I'm gonna have to try and find schematics for this thing to see what exactly I need to do to fix it. I don't know. I just wish the guy had sent me a damn amplifier that friggin' works is all. With all the money I paid for this thing. Anyhow, let's put this aside. And we'll go talk about the home theater for a second. So there's my current home theater receiver. It's a Denon 6300. It's got the noise bug. I've talked about it before. But, uh, yeah, that's the reason why I'm upgrading. I've been wanting to do this for years now and just never had a chance. But uh, see, the problem is when you've got a full 7.4.2 channel Atmos system going like I do, there's only so much power to go around from a, a uh, unit like this. You might get maybe 50 to 60 watts per channel legit into 11 channels out of class AB, and that's all you're getting out of one of these receivers. You want more than that, you have to go with separates, and that's what I'm doing. At least that's what I'm hoping to do. Assuming I can find equipment that works. Anyhow, this screen is going to be going away. I'm rolling it up so we can talk some more. What I'm going to have to do is I'm going to have to move the screen forward to about here. If you can see that. And the reason for that is I am going to an acoustically transparent screen. The reason I'm doing that is these giant tapped horn subwoofers. This guy is coming off and coming down in front of this one, and it's going to be firing that way. Right now it's firing up at the uh, corner in the 
ceiling area up there and uh, it just flaps the uh, drop ceiling up and down like you wouldn't believe so uh yeah the plan is to take this horn off this horn fire it that way and then all the new home theater speakers are going to go on top of uh this area here i'm building i can't believe i'm about to say this but seven new home theater speakers to replace these guys right here and uh, yeah, I really want to get that speaker out of the ceiling. So uh, that's the plan, building all new speakers, all new equipment or whatever. And yeah, we'll see if I ever decide to uh, buy another lab group and amp from that same seller or not, but probably not at this point. But uh, we'll give him a chance, we'll see what he says. I might get a refund or partial refund or something. I hope so. It took so much to get that thing here. Anyway, yeah, I've got cables going every which way in here. These are all coming out too. I have to replace all this stuff. But uh, yeah, there will be a giant equipment rack somewhere in the house, probably in a, a different room from this one, that will hold all the electronics. For uh, processing, I'm gonna do Anthem, I think. I did consider the uh, model price one for a little bit, but uh, that particular unit uses DRAC Live, and I'm not a fan of paying extra to get functionality that should be baked into the box itself to begin with. So, uh, yeah, that's basically the long and short of it. Big project plan for 2025 when I get around to it. We'll see what happens with this amp. All right, folks, coming back to the uh, lab group and amplifier a day later, and several dollars shorter, like about $1,500 shorter. I actually found schematics for the amplifier channels in this amplifier, so uh, I think I might make an attempt to fix this. But uh, before I do that, it's important for me to uh, go through this and understand how it works, and uh, yeah, I haven't been very good at fixing Class AB stuff in the past, but uh, why not just jump to the Class D stuff right away? Let's do that. It's not possibly going to go wrong, won't it? But uh, anyhow, we'll take a look at these schematics together and we'll try and figure out what's going on here. And I've got a, a red marker and a green marker here, so uh, I can show you which parts are bad that I've found so far. It's going to take much more diagnosis on this before I can actually be confident enough to attempt a fix, but uh, yeah, before we get to this, I just wanted to mention I have contacted the seller about this, and he does seem to be amicable to a, a partial refund at least, but uh, so far I have yet to receive any word of any refund. I'm going to give him a chance. I'll let you know if he does or doesn't do it in the comments below, but uh, I just want to get to this while it's kind of fresh in my mind. I just watched an hour-long video on how Class D amplifiers work, so... Uh, yeah, just trying to figure things out here while I've still got that fresh in my mind. Anyhow, right here are our two MOSFETs here. These are responsible for the uh, audio output of the amplifier. You can see the uh, this one supplies the negative side of the output and this one supplies the positive side. Now, here's our bad MOSFET right there. This one tested good in circuit, but it may not be good. Let's see if I can draw a question mark upside down. That looks like a J to me, but maybe it's the right way around. I don't know. But it currently tests good. I'm going to have to pull it out of circuit in order to test it properly, but uh, yeah, this one's definitely bad. Definitely. And you'll recall that I measured all the fuses and they all checked good. Well, these are the two fuses here. This is the fuse for the negative supply, and this is the fuse for the positive. This one now tests bad. The amplifier is supposed to crowbar this circuit into a blowing the fuse if there's DC voltage present, and it appears that it, it did that while I was testing it. So, uh, yeah, this fuse is gone. This fuse was good. However, I have now removed it. But uh, in terms of actually fixing this, 
because it's such a complicated design, the uh, the big question mark I have here, and I'm sorry, I'm gonna have to do this upside down because I can't read my own question marks upside down. So uh, this is a big question mark right now. This is the gate driver for both of these two MOSFETs. One's good, one's bad. So this may be good. This may be bad because I don't know what happened when this thing blew up. Did it take out this IC? It's a $2 IC, so I'm probably gonna change it anyway, but uh, yeah, that's the question. And there's a lot of other question marks in around here. What else went out with this MOSFET? Did all this stuff go out? Did all this stuff go out? I don't know, I have to diagnose and test all this stuff in order for me to be confident of uh, possibly getting this fixed, but I'm going to try and fix it. I'm taking lemons and making lemonade here. I'm not happy that I bought fifteen hundred or bought a fifteen hundred dollar amp that only has seven of eight channels working, but uh, I'm going to use this as a as a uh, learning experience. I'm going to try to fix this. If I can't fix it, well, then I'm going to have to try and cripple it somehow. The amplifier has the ability to shut down each channel when it detects a problem, and that's what it's doing now. That's why we're getting the lights on in front. But uh, I want to try and figure out exactly how I can uh, permanently disable this channel in order for it to uh, to um, completely eliminate this circuit from the equation, the dead channel. And I think the way I would do that is by uh, killing that voltage right there. And that should probably do it, I think. Probably. It might still give me lights in the front, but... Uh, if I get rid of this voltage right here, that should do it. So, uh, yeah, at least if I did that, it wouldn't be trying to apply power to this circuit and uh, absolutely not doing anything with it because it's all blown up. So, uh, yeah, so basically that's where we're at with this amplifier. I need to uh, go through this entire circuit and try and figure out what's going on with it. And... Uh, these are other question marks here. These transistors here, I don't know exactly what they do. They might be there for engaging and disengaging bridge mode. I'm not exactly sure. I haven't been that far through the uh, service documentation I've got yet, but uh, I will say Lab Groupon has given me a lot of tips in that uh, service documentation I was able to find. So. Uh, I'm going to give myself maybe an 80% chance. I'm going to be optimistic on this, that I can get this fixed, but uh, there's always that 20% chance that I might not be able to get it fixed. So, uh, yeah, as far as the next amplifier goes, it's either going to be the C10-8X or another one of these C28Xs, or possibly I'll go over to Crown for the second amp. I don't know yet. We'll get to that when the time comes, but I've got a whole year to deal with this. So, uh, well, probably more than a year at this point. So anyway, my stomach is now growling. So if you guys want to give me any tips, if anybody knows these Class D amplifiers better than I do and wants to give me some tips on what to check next, go right ahead and do so in the comments. You are much appreciated to do so, but... Uh, in the meantime, I've got a year to learn about these Class D amplifiers, and I'm going to take the time to do that before I even attempt to fix this. So, uh, yeah, drop your comments below, let me know, and I'll see you in the next video. Take care.